Hey everybody, it's George from DinosaurGeorge.com. Still answering a lot of questions. I'll tell you, it's kind of nice to have so much free time that I can answer a lot of these. So let's get right into it. This first question comes from Ryan from Polo, Illinois. Ryan says, hello DG, how you doing? Ryan, I'm doing great, man. It's good to hear from you. Uh, Ryan said, I just finished reading the book Raptor Red, and in one of the chapters it states that Therizinosaurus and Segnosaurus had a similar lifestyle to a badger. Is that possible? P.S. I thought that what you did on the 100th episode was absolutely hilarious, and I'm looking forward to the next episode. <laughs> well, I'm glad you liked that, Ryan. Uh, I would say probably 99% of the people I heard back from did enjoy it. There was a handful that uh, didn't get it, and uh, actually were kind of mad because uh, I didn't answer that question. So <laughs> anyway, if they had been following me, they know I've answered that question so many times. But anyway, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, Raptor Red. Listen, it was a book that I absolutely loved. It's written by uh, Dr. Robert Bacher, who's a good friend, and I really like his work. Um, but I disagree with Dr. Bacher on this. When you look at Therizinosaurs, uh, Segnosaurs, they, to me, there's nothing about them that would suggest that they would make very good tunneling dinosaurs, only because I look at the design of the claws, they're so elongated and relatively thin that I don't think they were that, um, they would have been very well designed to dig through rock. I, I believe they would have had a problem breaking their nails uh, simply because of the design. Uh, also, you look at their body size, it would take a pretty enormous size hole to dig to be able to, uh, to, to basically live underground. The thing that's beneficial for a badger is that a badger is built very low to the ground and therefore he's not having to dig an enormous tunnel to be able to traverse underground. He really doesn't have to dig that much. So uh, I believe that that's probably not accurate. That's my opinion. Uh, I just don't believe that. But I do like Dr. Bacher's work, man. That guy's a genius. All right, uh, Brendan from Morris, New York. Is it possible that Tarbosaurus, Despletosaurus, and Gorgosaurus may have hunted in packs? Well, Brandon, yes, um, I do think they would have. Now, they wouldn't have hunted together. I don't believe any dinosaur, any predatory dinosaur, would have hunted cooperatively with other predators who were not immediate members of their family. I don't think that would have occurred. I do think that these dinosaurs may have hunted in small family groups. There's a benefit to hunting in a group, and that is you can do a lot more things than you can when you hunt independent. The reason why lions are successful is because they hunt in groups. The reason why um, leopards are not as successful is because they generally hunt alone. So therefore, leopards prefer an environment where they can ambush prey. Lions can hunt out in the open. Well, Despletosaurus, Tarbosaurus, and Gorgosaurus, those dinosaurs are too big to be simply relying all, solely on ambush. They probably had to actively chase their prey out in the open in an effort to catch it. So by hunting in a family group, it allows you to do a lot of things. You can use one of the members of the family as a diversion to attract the attention of your potential prey. Uh, you can set up ambushes where you drive prey towards other waiting members of the family. So yes, Brendan, I do think that they hunted in packs, maybe not all the time, uh, and certainly not with members of other species. All right, uh, Cedric from, oh my gosh, I hope I can pronounce this, Mekayan? Philippines? Holy smokes, did I ever mess that up. Mekayuyan. It's spelled M-E-Y-C-A-U-A-Y-A-N. Cedric, my gosh, I hope I didn't butcher that too terribly much. Next time you write me, tell me how to pronounce that, that, uh, that name and I'll certainly do it. Uh, Cedric says, Dear Dinosaur George, hope you're doing okay. I just wanted to ask you whether T-Rex lived alongside Parasaurolophus. P.S. I love your site and I love your show Jurassic Fight Club. Well, Cedric, thank you very much. That's very kind of you. By the way, I am doing, uh, I'm doing okay. I hope you and your family are doing well. You know, I've never been to the Philippines. I'd love to come someday, and maybe I'll meet you in person, Cedric. Uh, all right. Uh, yes, uh, Parasaurolophus lived alongside of Tyrannosaurus rex. Um, I think Tyrannosaurus may have even uh, hunted those guys or considered them prey. An interesting thing I saw one time where somebody suggested that Parasaurolophus may have been capable of communicating at a level, a tone, that was so deep and so low, no other animal other than Par Parasaurolophus may have been able to hear it. But then, uh, speaking to Dr. Larry Whitmer one time, he is an absolute genius when it comes to studying the auditory systems and the inner ear and the brain and the skull of dinosaurs. 
He had said that he, he believed that Tyrannosaurus may have been able to hear low frequency sound. So it's quite possible that Parasaurolophus may have communicated with low frequency, thinking his communications were simply between he and, a, and another member of the family, but it could be that Tyrannosaurus rex was eavesdropping on that conversation. He may not have known what Parasaurolophus was saying, but he certainly wanted to know where he was saying it from. He may have used it as a homing device to zero in on his prey. Anyway, yeah, they did live together. They were contemporaries. All right, uh, Jaron from Cincinnati, Ohio. Hey, DG, how are you? Great, Jaron, how are you? Uh, have you heard of scientists trying to recreate dinosaurs from chicken embryos, and what are your thoughts on that? And do you think it's possible? Jaron, I saw that television show. I found it absolutely fascinating. It was amazing some of the things they could do. But personally, I don't think we possess the ability to actually recreate a dinosaur uh, the way we think of dinosaurs. Certainly birds have an immediate relationship with predatory dinosaurs. Um, the thing is that yes, we can tweak those things and yes, we can create our little own Frankensaurs, Frankenstein dinosaurs, where perhaps we can mess around with things and, and recreate something that looks odd and may have some features similar to a dinosaur. But personally, I've never had the opportunity to study that in great detail, so I'm not really qualified to, to go into much more detail. All I can speak about is what I saw on the television show, and it doesn't necessarily mean that that television show was giving us all of the opinions. They may have just been focusing on what we think we can do or what we say we can do, but there may not have been a lot of people that, that um, may agree with that, and there may be some scientific reasons why. I just don't know. Personally, I think it's pretty cool, but I'm scared a little bit when we start jacking around with, uh, with trying to create our own animals. That gets a little spooky. All right, finally, Thomas from Diamond Bar, California. Thomas, I don't think I've ever heard from anybody from Diamond Bar. I think you're the first. He says, hi, Dinosaur George, how are you? I'm great, I'm absolutely great. Thomas, thank you for asking. I came here to ask you this. Was Spinosaurus's claws an effective weapon against predators, and could it kill dinosaurs like Rugops? Well, Thomas, I will tell you something. I have seen a couple of Spinosaurus claws, and these things are heavy duty. They're very thick, they're very robust. I think they would have been an incredibly nasty weapon against anything that would have been considered dinner or considered a rival or a threat. Um, I, I often, you, you often hear me talk about Spinosaurus as his body design is not quite what some of the other big predators were, so I don't give him as much uh, credibility as I probably should. D don't mistake this. Spinosaurus was an absolute walking, living nightmare, and those claws made him terrifying. I think he could have really caused a tremendous amount of damage no matter who he was attacking. They would have paid the price. So whether he's a fish eater or not, that's irrelevant. Those claws were certainly designed to inflict some pretty massive injuries. All right, uh, visit my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. If you've got a question, send it to us. Go to the Ask Dinosaur George page. While you're there, click on the Witty Museum page. I just put that on. Uh, I am the guest curator of paleontology for the Witty Museum. I have an incredibly proud association with them. Um, for any of you that are visiting San Antonio, go to the Witty. You'd be amazed. I'll tell you guys something really exciting. Uh, we just uh, reconstructed the um, Triceratops who has sat in their main hall for years. We've just rebuilt him. We brought him up to be more scientifically accurate. We've remounted him and I tell you something, man, he looks incredible and we're getting ready to unveil him uh, in about another month or so. So uh, stay tuned to that. But anyway, visit the Witty website. Also, while you're there, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter. And as always, for you young people out there, for everybody out there, practice your reading because it's incredibly important. And most important of all, everybody, always use good manners and treat the people around you the way you want to be treated. And you'll find out you'll enjoy life a lot more. Beats the heck out of walking around grumpy seven days a week. Take care, everybody. I'll see you soon.